again and welcome to the Yara Ben Emmet YouTube channel where you are here to hear Torah Watchman series. We talk about all things Jewish. We talk about all things that impact the Jewish people around the world. Sometimes we get a little bit geopolitical. We talk about the affairs in Eretz Israel. We talk about Jews in the diaspora, especially Jews like myself who live in the diaspora waiting on a Mashiach to come. May he come quickly. In, in the United States of America. The last time I spoke to you was before Yom Kippur, okay? I hope everyone, I hope everyone had a very uh, spiritually enriching time, especially if you're Jewish in this. You know, this month, Tesri, is very important to me personally because it's a month not only of, of Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the beginnings of New Year for the Jewish people, and, but also Yom Kippur, which is an opportunity, a unique opportunity once per year where a, any Jew, no matter who they may be in their life's walk, whether at across the spectrum of their journey of Teshuva or thinking about Teshuva or not even observe it at all, where they have an opportunity for soul cleansing while they're alive. It's an amazing concept. Anyway, before I get to that, the title of this Torah Watchman edition is the day that Satan took off work. The day that Satan took off work. And you will find out what I'm talking about. It's an interesting spin on Yom Kippur. This is my retrospective. This is what the simple Jew uh, has been revealed to him personally and as an individual Jew uh, on my experience for Yom Kippur this year. Because every year is different. Every year is different. Let's begin with some Holy Scripture. Vayakra, uh, chapter 16, verses 1 through 34. Now, I have Torah parshas about that parashat in the past. It simply it talks about the Kohen Gadol, which was Aaron at that time, a blessed memory. His sons recently passed away. Okay, His sons violated the uh, Mishkan rules in that they went into the Holy of Holies outside of the appointed time in which the, only the Kohen Gadol, not even Moses, could go into the Holy Holies beyond the veil there, where the Ark of the Co Covenant was. Only once per year were they allowed to do this, but evidently Aaron's sons made the mistake for whatever reason, maybe curiosity, experimenting, maybe enumerated. The sages debate this thing, not germane. Anyway, they just recently passed away. So before Aaron could even sit sent uh, Shiva for the passing of his sons and mourning them. He would not allow them to mourn them. Why? Because the sins of Israel were at stake. It, this horrible death occurred in the middle of this ceremony. This was leading up to Yom Kippur, folks. Okay, Yom Kippur, first of all, is, is not spelled out per se in the Torah, like in Vayakra and Leviticus. It simply is a day of remembrance. And what's important here, Hashem said, this is an eternal day of remembrance for the Jewish people when they come before the Lord their God to be forgiven, to be anointed with the blood of, of the goat, of the bulls, and burnt sacrifices, animal sacrifices. This was going on in the desert at this time before Israel we even had a chance to become Israel as far as being patronized in the nation of Canaan, that, that nation state there. So we read about this before. This is when they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. But this was happening here, that the, all the people were gathered, all the people were gathered to come around the Mishkan, around the tabernacle. Again, if you can picture this, you have all the tents set up for all the chieftains of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they were required to offer burnt offerings, be able to present themselves to get cleanse their clothes, wash their clothes. Think about what the Jews had to do before they approached the mountain of God, which is Mount Sinai. The same kind of cleansing ritual applied. Think about the red heifer and other things like that. So leading up to the title where I'm getting to, here we have two uh, two goats, two he goats. One of uh, they were decided um, by which one belonged to Hashem or the people which one um, was going to be let go into the wilderness and die. Uh, this was chosen by Lot. Now, there's a tradition in America over the Thanksgiving turkey. By Lot, you choose a turkey that was meant to be killed, but 
but it's a but it gets to survive the Thanksgiving holiday. There's underpinnings of Judaism everywhere, Baruch Hashem. Don't want to get into that too much more. But so you have the uh, Kohen Gadol, which is the chief priest of Israel, Aaron. You know, he laid hands on on uh, both goats. Okay, one goat was given to Hashem by Lot, and it was actually sacrificed right there. And it was the body was consumed to ashes, and there was uh, aromatic uh, frequencies and things of that nature. The blood was taken into the Holy of Holies at that point in time of the year. We estimate that Yom Kippur uh, occurs, you know, at a certain time in Tesrei, you know, around the around the the ninth and tenth of Tesrei, you know, approximately ten days from the start of Rosh Hashanah. That's the way the sages have done the calendar. I'm not going to argue that. But anyway, so the sins of Israel were consumed by one goat there, and the blood was taken to the mercy seat upon the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Holies between the, the two Chardim of there. But only the high priest, only the Kohen Gadol, only Aaron was allowed to go there. Okay? I already talked about this. So, long story short, the other gate goat, the name was given to it as Azra, Az, uh, Azel, Azrael, Azel, a different pronunciation. See, just to this day debate what that meant. Okay, there's some superstition here. They refer to it as a high cliff in which the goat was literally led to its death and thrown over. But the Torah actually talks about the goat was led out of the camp of Israel and uh, into a, dry, a wilderness area, maybe in the Negev Desert. I don't know. I mean, Jerusalem is surrounded by deserts on either side and rocky high places and all of this. The important thing that the, this goat, Azrazil, was let go to die in the wilderness or to uh, encounter some unfortunate set of circumstances, okay? Um, superstition refers to this as some demonic thing or whatever, um, some adversarial thing of Satan, whatever. It's not that important. The important is, is a division of sins, of omission and commission, premeditated sins and sins that were done uh, incidentally. Where, where I learned from the, the sacred uh, Midrash, you know, that that is the Mishnah Torah, you know, the Talmudic volumes there, where all the sages both commented of all the highlights in the Torah. I, it was very blessed this year. I really paid attention to some things because a rabbi there at my show in Kent Mail, Maryland, pointed out that the sages believed, and, and Rabbi Akiva, I believe, said this of blessed memory, you know, second century. Um, um, CE in Israel, he actually said that on one day, one day, every Jew is able to be like a Moloch, like an angel. Why? Because we fast, we are restrained from taking or uh, drinking water, eating, all the pleasures of life. We we um, say no to that. It's a hard fast for 12 hours, uh, literally between sunset of the previous day and sunset or an hour after sunset of the next day. It's difficult to do that. That's, that's where most Jews take that day off if, if, if God allows that. I was fortunate to have the whole day off, you know. So in the service, you think about the 613 misvot. Well, think about you going before the Lord your God, saying sacred prayers, read in Hebrew, but transliterated in English too, translated in English too. 613 times, literally, you go through s several different areas. This is the uh, Mazor for Yom Kippur that you read, a wonderful book, Arts Grow. And anyway, you said, Lord God, Hashem, please forgive me for violating XYZ Mesro, essentially. It could be, please forgive me for the sin of uncleanness. Please forgive me for envy, for jealous. Please forgive me or the, um, the wandering eye, the evil eye, or, or going into a, the, a realm of adulterous thinking, or adultery, or, or not giving to the charity. Every single misspelt, a Jew actually said that while they were fasting. And standing was a misspelt too, because the more you stand, the more, more closer you are to a mullet, to an angel. Why? This is explained very simply, but very sweetly, and I want to point this out is that angels do not have knee joints. 
They have no need to eat substance. They have no need to drink water or wine. They have no need of these things. They are simply messengers or molech, or molochim of Hashem. They are not messengers of the world. So at this day, this brief time, every Jew on the planet, by their choice, could be elevated to the, to the level of righteousness of the angels. Because at that time, they were messengers of Hashem. They were messengers of Hashem for their fellow man. They were praying not only for themselves and their own uh, reconstitution of their own neshama, but they were praying for other people too. Uh, there was a beloved prayer um, of Yixor, uh, in which it's very specific, like my mother passed away in 2010, you know, may her, may, her memory, may her memory be a blessing. So I had a unique opportunity to pray for her, for her soul, you know, rest in peace and all of this. But for the Jew, we pray to elevate that soul wherever it is, you know, and, and uh, show or, uh, or um, show or, or um, Gehenna. Yeah, Gehenna. I'm sorry. I've not had uh, my dinner yet. But anyway, been a long day anyway. Yeah, yeah, wrong day. You know, we all have had issues and everything else. But I want to put that aside. Anyway, I just want to let you know that Yom Kippur reflections are very important. Where I get to this day off thing for Satan, the adversary, the devil. Yes, the devil. Yeah, Christians out there, do you know that the devil gets one day off from his hard work of making our life absolutely miserable. Consider the book of Job, right? Anyway, when Satan comes before the Jew during this time, or Jews around the world, and they're davening, they're praying, they're, re they're reading from the, from the, uh, from the Matzor, they're, they're davening with, every, with a minion, with other Jews, both women and men, uh, children uh, too, you know. When they're doing this, there's, there, there's no problem with virtue. So we actually have a separate prayer, may the adversary's mouth be shut for this day. Because there's nothing here. <laughs> there's nothing here. There's no virtue to prosecute. So by tradition, the adversary, the Moloch, the angel is signed to make every human being miserable without the delicious love of God to seduce mankind since the time of Adam and Havilah. It's been a long time. But these adversarial Moloch, Molochim, which is referred to as Satan or a seducer or whatever, he got that day off on Yom Kippur, Baruch Hashem. The challenge for us today, Yom Kippur is over. We're thinking about um, Sukkot now, the eight days of Sukkot. We get an extra day in the diaspora, yay. But while we're thinking about that, you know, I already told you before, I have the 600... Uh, 13 misfelt posted on my wall. I mean, and little plaques hanging on different areas in my house. I take these things seriously. So don't wait once a year for Yom Kippur to become an angel. Yes, don't, don't wait one day a year to become a mensch, to be someone who's righteous, a sadic, to be someone who, who thinks more of the welfare of your fellow man and the deliciousness of your love relationship with Hashem, then you're thinking about the mundane, materialistic things of the planet. Anyway, this was a blessing to me uh, this week. I know everyone had their own unique blessing. Uh, I want to conclude by uh, my reading in the uh, Jerusalem or Palestinian Talmud. There's an interesting story, historical story, that if you, you know, after the fall of Jerusalem, and in one, in 135 CE, the Jews were exiled. They went everywhere. Even 70 CE, even the Second Temple was destroyed by the Romans. These Jews went everywhere. They went through through uh, Asia Minor. They went to Egypt. They went all of the uh, the Greco-Roman world. They went throughout the world. And but they were uh, immersed in polytheistic Hellenistic culture to the point where they did not celebrate any more high holidays except for Yom Kippur. They didn't even light Shabbos candle. They didn't circumcise their, their boys. They didn't uh, perform any of these rituals. But one ritual they did perform, even as Hellenistic, polytheistic, 
you know, worldly Jews who do not believe in the love relationship of Hashem, they did come back home once a year for Yom Kippur. That's why I'm saying the doors of your shul are always welcome for you, no matter what you've done in the past, as long as you're not in jail, hope God forbid. Whatever has happened is between you and the Lord. It's not for me to be your judge. God is already judged and blessed, just like those goats I've mentioned, you know. God has set free those things that, that and absorbed those things into the wilderness um, of, of sin and doubt and desolation, and he's... He's accepted that burnt offering for the other set of sin. God is always there to forgive us. Even the temples withstanding and burnt offerings withstanding. Remember the, the great prophet of Daniel, God's Hamod, who prayed three times a day without any burnt offerings, any temp temples there, any temple sacrifices. But his heart was righteous because he had the 613 misfell written upon his soul and his heart. If we all say all man, I hope everyone has a wonderful week ahead. Again, Sukkot, um, um, Sukkot begins. Um, Ever Sukkot is this Friday on Shabbat again. Wow, wow. A double whammy of celebration and beloved uh, uh, good tidings for the Jewish people. I hope you implore and wish you happy, happy New Year. Mine didn't. And I'm fighting that battle on the separate channels. Anyway, take care. Signing off. C.R. Bennett signing off, signing off from the Torah Watchman from the, from the day that Satan took off work. Take care. Shalom Aleichem. Please click uh, subscribe and like. I always want your comments. Take care. Goodbye.